This video is an overview of the first 10 chapters of the quantum chemistry playlist. So we'll start off by looking at early quantum theory, which motivates why classical mechanics is not sufficient for things that are very, very small or very light, where quantum mechanics takes over. We have applications like the photoelectric effect, where we can't get electrons out of a metal surface until a high enough frequency of photon. The Rydberg formula, which explains the line spectra, the frequencies of photons absorbed by hydrogen atoms or, or emitted when you heat them up. We look at the Bohr model for the hydrogen atom, assuming quantized angular momentum. The de Broglie uh, hypothesis that both matter and waves have particle, ma matter and light both have particle and wave like properties. And the uncertainty principle as it relates to measurement for position and momentum. We then go to classical waves, looking at the classical wave equation, which is going to motivate how our quantum waves are eventually going to behave using the quantum wave equation, the Schrodinger equation. So those are a sum of a bunch of normal modes where our wave oscillates as a cosine in time and as a sine in space when it's a vibrating string. We then use that to derive the Schrodinger equation, h psi equals e psi, the Hamiltonian operator acting on a wave function equals the total energy acting on the wave function. So we have the, the operator here, the wave function is an eigenfunction, and the energy is an eigenvalue. Our first model system we apply the Schrodinger equation to is the particle in a box, where the potential energy is infinite outside the box and zero inside the box. The wave functions there are signs, where each solution is another half sine wave inside the box and we develop the normalization constant uh, so that the probability of finding the particle somewhere is one. These energy levels are quadratic depending on some quantum number n which starts at one and can go all the way up to infinity. All right, then we move on to the general principles of quantum mechanics starting off with things like the postulates of quantum mechanics from which all other kinds of ideas in quantum mechanics can be derived. These include things like the wave function including the information needed to calculate any property of the system that every quantum every uh, physical observable property is represented by a quantum mechanical operator that when we measure the values, the properties associated with these operators, the only values we can measure are the eigenvalues of those operators. We can get the average value of these operator measurements by computing what are called expectation value integrals. And lastly, the Schrodinger equation tells us not only what the wave is for a given uh, Hamiltonian, but how it evolves in both space and time. Right. Our next model system is the harmonic oscillator, which has a quadratic potential, 1 half kx squared, where k is a spring constant. The solutions to these are a Gaussian times what are called the Hermite polynomials, so the ground state just being a Gaussian function. The energy levels there are evenly spaced, with the spacing being determined by the reduced mass of the two atoms in the bond and the uh, spring constant of our potential. And this is a model for vibrating molecules and can explain the IR spectra of molecules. Next model system is a rigid rotor, which is the model for rotations of molecules, diatomic molecules in particular, giving us a, a way to get the microwave spectrum of molecules. Um, our particle is free to move, uh, it's free to rotate as it likes as long as it remains at a fixed bond length. The wave functions there are what are called the spherical harmonic functions, having a quantum number j and a quantum number m in the spherical polar coordinates theta and phi. The energies are quadratically spaced, E equals hc b bar to j times j plus 1, where the rotational constant b depends on the bond length and the masses of the two atoms. So this gives us a series of lines which are linearly spaced as the separation between each uh, pair of energy levels is getting further and further apart as we go up. We then move to the hydrogen atom model system where we have a proton fixed at the origin and an electron at some distance r whose wave function we're solving for. That wave function has three quantum numbers n, l, and m. The principal quantum number n which determines the energy, the orbital quantum number l which determines the shape whether it's s, p, d, etc and m, 
which determines its orientation in space, things like PZ, PY, or PX. That wave function is a product of a radial wave function, depending on N and L, and the spherical harmonics, the same angular functions from the rigid rotor. The potential that it feels is the Coulomb potential to the nucleus, minus E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times R, and its energies depend inverse quadratically on a quantum number N, which starts at 1 and can go up to infinity. Then we, for anything more complicated than a hydrogen atom, we need approximate methods for our solutions. So we have three methods, the variational method, the linear variational method, and perturbation theory. In the variational method, we know that any approximate wave function has an energy which is greater than or equal to that of the true ground state. So the best approximation we can get is the approximation with the lowest energy. In the linear variational method, we use a basis set and we solve for the coefficients which give us the lowest energy by solving an equation called the secular determinant. In perturbation theory, we separate our Hamiltonian into a reference which we can solve exactly and a perturbation which we can't. And our energies and wave functions start with the energies and wave functions of our reference system plus successive first order, second order, etc. cetera, co uh, corrections as we go. We then move on to electrons with many atoms, applying these types of approximation methods. We have Hartree-Fock theory, where the energy of our atom is a sum over all of the electrons of their kinetic energy and attraction to the nucleus, plus the repulsion between all pairs of electrons. Our wave function has to be anti-symmetric with respect to the exchange of two electrons, giving rise to the Pauli exclusion principle. We develop what's called the Fock operator in Hartree-Fock theory to give us orbital energies and develop the Hartree-Fock equations for the general uh, energies of atoms. And we look at term symbols, which are uh, distinct symbols that represent certain electronic states of our molecule depending on the electron configurations. Finally, in these 10 chapters, we have diatomic molecules, where we try to solve for the wave functions and energies of homonuclear diatomic molecules, starting with the Born-Oppenheimer approximation that the nuclei are fixed, they have no kinetic energy. We use things like uh, the linear combination of atomic orbitals to get our molecular orbitals, things like the overlap of 1s orbitals on hydrogen atoms to give us things like 1 sigma g and 1 sigma u star bonding and antibonding orbitals giving us molecular orbital electron diagrams for our configurations, and we can also develop term symbols for those types of diatomic molecules. So that's a general overview of the first 10 chapters of our quantum playlist. There are four additional chapters covered in the next video, and links to each of the individual chapter reviews in the annotations here, as well as in the description.